Hi friends. Today I'm playing with um, some value work I thought you might find fun. I see this quite often on Instagram and so on. So I'm kind of taking the technique, which I use all the time in my paintings, but uh, wanted to share it with you. And many of you have asked me about this. So it's a little similar to that transparent type of um, technique that I've shared before. And it makes for a really beautiful uh, painting with the transparency and the darks and the lights. I think it's, it's really pretty. I'm going to be painting just these long, flowy, fun, and easy leaves. And I'm going to be using, I wanted to use a fun color today. So I think what I'll use is this purple here, which is uh, Windsor Newton, but I added a little bit of magenta, Quinn magenta to the purple, because I do want to have a couple variations of the purple. So I'm getting those ready on my palette. This one is just the pure violet, Quinn violet. And then this one, again, has a little bit of Quinn Magenta mixed in it, which, as you know, is my favorite color. And I might even add in, which I think would be a pretty combination. A part of me wants to add in some green, but it concerns me a little bit because these are opposites, complementaries, and if you mix them, they kind of neutralize each other out and turn a gray color. So let's play with maybe, let's see, let's pick up a blue and see what that looks like. Um, or maybe I'll, let's go for something really different. Let's go for maybe a sepia. Let's see here. See what that, let's put it on our color swatch sheet and see what these colors look like together. The main two colors I'll use will be the purple and Quinn Magenta, those two colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay those down. Point, press, point, so I've got We'll use that color for a leaf. And then I want to use the Quinn Magenta as another color. And as you can see there, which maybe we'll play with a little bit too, I've kind of double loaded my brush, which just means I have two different colors on there. I often like doing that. so. Just how I did that was I've got my purple here and then I've got that Quinn Magenta, which I'm gonna make just a little bit more of that so I have plenty on my palette ready to go. As you know, that's my very favorite color. And what I will do a lot of times is I want my colors to kind of mix on my palette so I will dip into that and then pick up that. And what happens when I put it on my paper, point press, I've got a mixture of both, which is really quite beautiful. So that is definitely something we can do. What we're gonna be doing today too, by the way, is what's called layering or glazing. And once your bottom layer is dry, you're gonna come in over it and point, Point press. And we'll be doing something like that throughout our whole painting. Now we're going to be playing with those values as well, which just means I will also point press, point press, be putting in those lighter values. So we're going to have all this push and pull and depth and interest and I just 
I think it's really going to be beautiful. I was debating if I, I, I might just stick with these two colors. I was kind of debating if I should add in a little bit of an earthy color. Let's just put it next to this and see what we think. And by the way, I'm using uh, my Artisto pads, which you know I absolutely love for how much painting I do. <clears throat> they, and I've been painting for decades. These are just turned out to be such a find. And uh, they're on a ring, so I can fill up a book, store it, date it. They're also perforated if you did want to tear off one of your paintings and gift it or something. You can uh, do that, but I love filling these up and dating them and going back through them, and the quality is just really great. You can't see here, but they have some texture. They're quite thick. I mean, I'm just, I'm still shocked at how nice this paper is for the price. Okay, and I will link those in my profile. So I've got a brown here. This is actually a burnt sienna, which has... I chose that because it has a little bit of the red type of tints in it. So it might be really pretty with these colors. Let's just see. Let me put one next to these here. So that could be quite pretty actually. I kind of like that color with these purples. It's really pretty. Um, so I think those will be the color palette I use. <clears throat> and again, the reason I chose that was because that burnt sienna has some of those reddy, orangey tones, which of course, part of purple is red. So the, it, it kind of picks up each other and ties them together. And I think it'll add a little earthiness to those. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm using my Winsor Newton palette. So this is, again, the Quinn Magenta, um, Quinn Violet, and this is Burnt Sienna. If you are using your My Lang palette, which as you know, I love, 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 and think is so good for a beginner. The quality, they're made by Paul Rubens, which is a very high-end brand that I love. I've bought a lot of their small palettes, iridescence, um, really cool palette. These... Um, have all the colors a beginner could really need. And you don't have to worry about mixing or doing any of that, which when you're a beginner, you don't want to have to think about that. So if you are using that palette, the colors I would use would be, uh, they have a burnt sienna. Um, they have got, uh, I believe what I use instead of Winsor Newton's Quinn Magenta, I use the Rose Matter or Matter Rose, which is really a beautiful shade. Um, and then they do have this deep violet and they've also got a fresh purple. So you could use either one of those. Today, I'm going to go ahead and use my Winsor Newton. What you might just want to practice is that C stroke. I'm using my Princeton Round 8 brush. And something that came up today in one of my classes I was teaching was uh, to just know, kind of have in your mind, Size eight in a Princeton is gonna be different in another brand of brushes. So just check that. Um, you can't really order across the board a size eight. It's gonna be different in different brands. So just so you're aware of that, I do like the Velvet Touch. It's got a nice feel to the brush. Um, it holds its point. It holds just enough water for me. I think brushes are really just um, kind of a personal preference. So before we start, these are this is going to be my color palette. Um, they're a little bit of complementary colors with the oranges and the purples. And what you might just want to practice is those C strokes, which is just like so. We're using the point of our brush, point, keep moving, press. Now I don't have enough water on there. That's why you see that rough look. So point, press, and turning it into a C for a leaf. And then let's do that one more time. Point, press, just like that. Okay, so that's 
um, that C stroke you can definitely practice. And then the other thing I'd practice is just playing with the values. So this here has a darker value because it has more pigment. This here has a lighter value and this one underneath because it has more water than pigment. And what that does is the darker value is going to bring it to the forefront. The lighter value is going to fade kind of into and create a background. So you've got your foreground, your background, and kind of your mid colors. And that's what we're gonna be playing with today. Let's go ahead and grab your paper. Like I said, today I'm using my Artisto. Can't say enough about it. And I will link that, that below, but whatever paper you have. And let's get our paints ready in our palette. So again, Quinn Magenta and Violet. This is just a straight violet color. So I've got that. And then we'll be using, I'm gonna put a little bit more in there, that uh, Burnt Sienna, which is the same in the My Lang palette and the Windsor Newton. So you can use either one there. And by the way, too, because I know many of you have appreciated that I, you know, if you're a new beginner, you don't want to right away invest in Windsor Newton paints and the best brushes. So the Princeton is what I do like, but these Dugatos, you guys, are amazing. I've been using them for five months. They're like $15 for a pack. And I'm really pleasantly surprised. They are holding their tips. They're not getting frayed out. Now I take care of my brushes. When I'm done with them, I put them into their points. I store them laying down. I don't store them up because the water will go into the ferrule. So I do take care of my brushes, but for I think $15 for a whole set, um, these are a really, really great buy for the beginner and it gives you the variety of sizes. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start, you always start in watercolors with your lighter values and then we build up. It's much harder to lighten. You, you can lift a little bit, but it it's can be a little bit difficult. So let's start with our first light wash, just meaning more water. And if you aren't sure if you have too much water on there, what you can do is either tap off on the side of your well, or you can even take a towel and do something like that. Let's go ahead and get started here. Our first leaf, point, press, point, press. So you're creating this C, just like that. And actually, let's go ahead and draw in the, um, the uh, what do you call it, stem. Okay, let me do that. I'll go ahead and use this brown. There we go. And we're gonna have a variety of stems, but here's our first one. Okay, so we've got that and I kept that somewhat of a lighter value, then let's just go ahead and create another one here, and I'm gonna really do a light value. So see how much lighter that is, and make sure just for interest that you are using different sizes, because nature is full of different sizes, different shapes, um, different tones, so very, this one is a little bit longer and a little bit more slender. This one's a little fatter. So keep that in mind when you're doing these. Now what you might start with is going in and creating a lot of these light values and then we can go back in and get darker and darker and darker. That might be the way I build this painting up. I'm going to go in right now and create another stem here, just like that. And then maybe one more coming out this way. 
and then we're going to add different leaves to all of those. So again, we're gonna go with starting with our lightest value. So let's pick up some of that purple, lots of water in there, meaning more water to pigment. Um, not meaning to keep a lot of water on your brush, it just means creating a value, a light value of your paint. If you're not sure, do a little swatch. And I, with that, that's the exact value that I wanted. I didn't want this value. So maybe keep a swatch nearby and just practice that. And I'm going to go in and create another leaf right here. Point, press, point, press. So see how light this value is? Just like that. Um, let's do another one over here. Point, press. And one here, make this one a little fatter. But I'm using, again, this light value. So they're really coming to the back. Now I'm gonna go in and change my color a little bit and pick up that Quinn Magenta. Now, as you can see on here, it's quite dark. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put it some in a palette here, add a little bit more water. If I need to go in and test, that's a good value. I'm happy with that, just dab off, or you can use your paper towel. And let's go in and create a few more of these. Point, press, point, press like that, different values, point press, point press. So practicing those C curves first, just warming up your hand is always a great idea. And let's bring a couple of these brown ones down here, point press, there we go, point press. So you could do a whole sheet actually on these values, maybe going from light to a little darker, a little darker. So you kind of get the hang of what it takes um, to create those light values and dark values. I'm going to bring down some of those brown leaves down here, like that, just keep going. Maybe a round one. Just keep adding in. Ooh, my stomach's growling. There we go. Okay. And now with that, I'm going to go in and maybe add just a couple more of these purpley pink ones. So let's do that. Point, press, point, press. And maybe a round one here. Now notice I'm really trying to vary my sizes for that interest. So I think that's good. I've got some of these purples up here and I want to just maybe add in one of those over here. So point, press, just like that. Okay, so I've got all my light values in. Now what I wanna start doing is darken that a little bit and come in over these with a little darker value. So that medium value, kind of like this was the very, oops, transparent. This is a medium, this is a dark, all right? So we're gonna be playing with that. So these will overlap the lighter ones. We're kind of creating this mid ground. So point, okay, so I see that needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more paint because I want a mid tone like that. So that's just a little bit darker. So just playing with that and getting used to it. Point, press, point, press like that, so a little bit darker, that mid-tone. This is such a great practice, too, to get used to how to navigate those different uh, values. Point, press, point, press. There we 
There we go. That one's actually a little bit darker. That's okay. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water and maybe do one. Let's see, where could we use more of that purple? Point press. There we go. So because that's darker, it went right over that other one that fades into the background a little bit. There's also some transparency, which I actually love that look. Okay, so we've now got several that are in that mid-ground. I think I might put another layer on this just to darken it a tad. There we go. And now let's do a couple with a little darker value of that Quinn Magenta. Let's see if we've got that right. Yep. And let's add in some of those. Point press. And you can add another layer on here. So you don't, if it looks, go lighter first because you can always darken. Now, actually, that's fine. Go in again. And let's see, let's put one right here, point press. There we go. We're working in that mid value still. So look how pretty that is. And go over the other leaves. Point press. Just like that. I have to plug in my video recorder. I'm so sorry. Hold on one second. Okay. I was teaching all morning and didn't have my phone plugged in. Okay. So you see how we're going with this? They're getting darker and darker. Now where you're gonna see a really dramatic uh, depth is when we add in these darker colors. And I actually didn't do too much with the mid-ground on that burnt sienna. So let's just do that right now. That burnt sienna, by the way, um, is not quite as opaque and dark as some of these other colors. So it doesn't stand out as much. Point, press, point, press. There you go. So I don't know how much darker I will be able to get that um, unless I really go thick with the paint. Point, press. There we go. Okay, look at how pretty those colors are together. So now for the really fun last glaze, we're gonna go full strength, full value of these beautiful colors. So let's pick up that purple, full value, lots of pigment. And let's go in and start adding some of those in. Um, I think I wanna put one right here, point, press, we go. Look at that. See how much that pops out? Point press, point press. And you can continue to darken those. So I'm going to get a little darker. Point press like that point press because this is my darkest value look at how beautiful that is isn't that fun you guys this is something you can only have in watercolors I'm telling you point press there we go let's add in a few more here point press now that's kind of a light value, so I just go in and I can add some more. There we go. How beautiful and fun is that? 
Let's go in now with that Quinn Magenta and Purple. And I'm actually going to darken that up a bit. So I'm really using a ton of pigment there to get a very dark value. Pick up some more of that Quinn Magenta, which is my favorite color, so I gladly pick more of that up. Okay. And let's go in and add one here. Point press, point press. There we go. Uh, let's see, where do we wanna put another one in? Point press, there we go. Oh, so pretty. And it's great to have that transparency. I also like that transparency. So you can see a little bit of my uh, other leaves popping through, but look at how far in the background this one is. Isn't that lovely? Let's do another one right here. I'm going to Ooh, now that is a really dark value. That is heavy on the pigment. Look at that. Maybe one right here. I'm trying to vary the size of my leaves. Look how beautiful. So maybe add in a couple little small ones. Point, press, just like that. Point, press, like that. Look how pretty. Point press, and then let's go back and add in just a tiny bit more of that burnt sienna. I'm gonna try and get a really dark, dark value if I can. So I'm picking up as much paint as I can. Point press. So that's about as deep a value as you're gonna get with that color. Just adding in some of these little buds like that. Look at how beautiful that is though. I just love this technique. And this is such a good practice in, again, those values, knowing your values. So I think I'm just gonna stop right there. I think that's plenty. Um, we could always go in and I'm gonna rinse a lot of my paint off and go in and maybe add some in the background here, point press, something like that. Could always do that. Just to give a little more depth. There you go. I think that's kind of fun. I feel like I want to put a little purple down here. So there you go. I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you give this a try. It's a wonderful painting, but also it's fun to play with those complementary colors, meaning they're contrasting colors. Let me grab my color wheel for you very quickly. I don't think I have it. Oh, I do have it here. So right here, we're using these purples. And then we're using, which really contrasting color, complementary color would be green. But I'm kind of allowing them to blend together with some of the reds and oranges. So these are almost directly across from each other, but not, not quite. So I went with more this yellowy tone, this yellowy orange, which is across from the violets. Oops, sorry. So I tried to go with some of these tones and they're just beautiful together. The main thing, make sure you don't mix them because they will create mud. Uh, they kind of neutralize each other out. So give this a try. I think it's a lot of fun. And um, if you have any questions, just ask. Get yourself these Artisto pan, uh, pans. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I love them. And I just think they're such a great pad to work with and refer back to and date them. And um, 
I think that's it. So if you're enjoying this, you know, let me know. Uh, this was actually a request from somebody to play with these values and um, I love your requests. So thank you for being here and I will see you all soon. Okay, bye-bye.